Hey folks, Mac T here, and what we have is a non-functioning 2.0 EcoBoost Turbo. I believe it was off of a 2012 Ford Edge, and uh, we're going to go over a little bit of information on this first, uh, in that the uh, turbocharger was emitting uh, some uh, issues, lack of power, having all sorts of problems, and a lot of times... Uh, we think it's well the wastegate very well known for its problems and uh, if you can see in the light here that wastegate if I get that light in there see that wastegate uh, that little flapper thing right here uh, it's not working all that well so we're going to go ahead and go over what I've discovered while I've been checking this out and that wastegate ain't necessarily the problem, uh, but we're going to go over what the technical uh, trouble code on this is. And uh, it's a P0299, and that's where the powertrain control module, you know, the PCM, has detected that the bank A or the single turbo charger uh, issue is not putting out normal boost pressure. In other words, we got a low pressure, which would mean we have low power. And uh, for a variety of reasons, we're going to have a problem. And if we don't have enough boost, we don't have power. It's that simple. But what causes that? There's a couple of things here that uh, I've discovered that are the problems. And it's, it's like, you know, when you find out you're sick and then all of a sudden they find out something else and then you know, everything goes together and, and makes a problem. And in this case, I believe we have a two-fold problem on this turbo. And uh, first thing I want to cover on this is what turbochargers we have. And uh, we're going to go back to 2012 when they put these in here. So this is a first gen in, uh, for the 2.0 EcoBoost on the edge. And the part number is CB5Z6K682-8. And uh, this thing... Uh, online you can get it as low as six hundred and fifty one dollars and thirty seven cents and the dealers will sell it to you for a kind of price if they do the work of well over a thousand dollars so uh, yeah they're gonna get a premium on this as far as what they're doing and this one goes just for the 2012 then interestingly enough in 2013 and 14 they jumped the part number that's right, they went to part number CB5Z6K682-G. Now, there's a change that they made in there, and uh, what they did is this lip right here, this lip right here is very thin, and on the newer ones, the lip sticks out further, and this recessed groove right here is uh, essentially, if you guys can see it, see that groove? Well, it's bigger. So on the 13 and 14, this groove in here that allows the catalytic converter to sit onto it is much deeper. So they made that change for 2013 and 14. So thus you're going to have that. Now the 2013-14 uh, turbo is $624.80. So you get a price drop. But again, the dealer is going to charge you over a thousand dollars for this and keep in mind there's a two hundred fifty dollar core charge if you do it yourself so that means you got to pay the six hundred and uh... you know twenty four eighty plus two hundred and fifty then when you replace your turbo you take this one back and you get your two fifty back so that's how that works because these are core because they what they do is they rebuild them okay they have they have remanufactured ones out there if they're rebuilding them reselling them so uh, also, I'm going to tell you who makes this, and you guys will probably uh, be able to go to the horse's mouth to get this one here. Now, they did another change, okay? 2015 through 2018, another part number, F2GZ6K682-C, and that turbo for those years runs $608 newer they get the cheaper they get I guess so uh, again they've made other modifications to them and everything else uh, over the years as they're going so this is the third generation by the time we get to the 15 through 18 
And then 2019, they got another one, and that one is a KG2GZ6K682B. And that turbo costs $683.45 if you buy it yourself through a parts store and look for a good deal. If you go to Ford, you're going to be paying $1,100, $1,200 for this as they charge it, and it's still a 250 core charge. So you got a lot of things going on here as far as this uh, turbo and the different prices. So there's four generations of this turbo. That's right, four. So you got to make sure you look up the proper years and everything that you're going through to try to get these things. But uh, basically when these fail, uh, so far what we're seeing is the wastegate was an issue. Uh, therefore you get less power. Sometimes they have the hoses pop off and then you don't get any boost and things like that. So that was the earlier models. I think they've got their fasteners and everything else figured out. Bigger lips on here or whatever they're doing. But uh, that is predominantly what we have going on. Now, as far as uh, anything else that goes on with these, keep in mind, on the average, it's going to be 7.8 hours labor. So if you figure your dealer's charging $125 an hour, uh, you're going to be charged uh, almost $1,000 just for labor, plus $1,000 for the turbo. And then you're going to have to pay for the extra hoses, gaskets, O-rings, and everything else associated with this. Because Ford specifies when you take this off, you have to throw away certain parts and put new parts on. So you're probably looking with shop fees, taxes, and everything else. Uh, it could be as high as $2,500 to replace this turbo. Uh, that puts the water pump issue on the 3.5 <laughs> down the scale in my opinion uh, although it can grenade the engine this won't grenade the engine but it is pricey folks so uh, DIY in this you're gonna need a lift you're gonna have to pull covers off out through the bottom you gotta get up release the exhaust which is a whole nother mess if it's rusty and then you gotta take an unbolt to get at this and uh, again you're gonna need a lift to do it because you gotta pull it up and down and, and in and out of, as far as removing it they, they determine this is a class B experience as far as knowledge to do this job so therefore yeah you're looking at a pretty hefty price to replace these things so uh, and they don't tend to fail under warranty they 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 do a pretty good job on that but uh, that is pretty much it as far as your turbos go now we want to take and look at some things that uh, we ought to find out now this here is the vacuum solenoid. I uh, don't know the official name of it, but it does a vacuum. That's why I got this hose and this clamp on here, because we're going to test the vacuum on it, because I'm going to show you something interesting. But we have an EFFBE, and it's a 02305015, and then it's got a bunch of other numbers on here, but uh, not sure what that means. It looks like it's all in German or something I don't know what the heck the writing is there but this is definitely made for Ford in a foreign country uh, so uh, we don't know what's going on in that part of it we have the Ford Motor, Motor Company uh, parts on here as you can see we got some numbers right down in here and let me zoom this in to see if we can actually see it there we go let me show some light on it that's what we got and that's for the actual turbo part so we got that that number there and then right on the back right here folks we have the actual number that you can read right there and this is a Borg Warner turbo folks and we got the part number there uh, it's a CB5E 6K 682-8C. And it's got a serial number and a uh, Borg Warner number, which is 530-397-00270. So this is a Borg Warner. Okay, another number right here that you will see on this. 
So uh, Borg Warner is who makes the turbo for the Ford Edge. So if you had that question, now you have the answer because it's right there clearly stated on the uh, tab that Borg Warner makes this turbo. So that might help you in finding parts. Don't know if that's going to do it all together. But let's go ahead and zoom back out here a bit. There we go. Now, we have, uh, have this. And I want to prove something to you all, folks, first. Uh, I have my uh, Mighty Vac here. And if you watch, I'm going to do this. Okay, you see that? It's holding vacuum. Now let's do a test on this turbo and see what happens. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this on here. I have no leaks. I've tested this before. I put the hose clamp on here. There's no leak for the hose. Everything's on there tight. But here's what happens when I try to actuate this solenoid, this vacuum, to open the wastegate. And keep in mind, this person sent it to me and they said the wastegate was broke. But in reality, is the wastegate broke? Because here's what happens when I tried to put vacuum on it. Nothing. You guys see that, right? See how it tries to move? It tries to move, but I can't get a vacuum to go on this. So, what does that tell me? Well, it tells me that uh, maybe we have a failure of our solenoid right here. This solenoid has failed. So, if this can't pull back, for the wastegate, then this wastegate is not going to function. You see that? I'm going to try to get this running here. So you guys see that wastegate, right? See that thing? We want to get that to work. We want that to close. Now that turbo I mean, it, it's a small turbo. Check that thing out. It's tiny. This is like the tiniest turbo you could ever put in anything. But uh, we can't get that wastegate to shut. Now, the other thing that's bothering me about this wastegate right here is look how loose that wastegate is. That thing's just flopping. It's not going to take and do anything. It's been spinning around in there. It doesn't doesn't necessarily work it's very loose and from what I can see it's not making a good contact in there when it does shut so I can push it shut and I and there's 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 play in it when it when when you try to shut it and it's not lining up it's actually falling to the bottom and not seating properly on there so this uh Turbo has definitely had better days, but when this thing's trying to move, you can look at this and see that uh, this has a lot of play in it too. Now, now one person you know could say, well, I could adjust the play by simply pulling this clip off, and yeah, you could do that. You can pull this clip off and adjust these nuts to try to take out some of that play by pulling this back just a little bit. Okay, so there wouldn't be so much play in there, in that uh, wastegate. But the problem that we mostly have is the fact that this solenoid has failed. It wasn't necessarily the wastegate, but this part here that actually failed. So that's where we're at with this as far as this. Could we replace this? Yes, you can buy this and replace it. You can buy this part. But this wastegate is a whole different thing because getting it in and out is going to be a problem. 
looks like it's pressed in there. So could I buy a new wastegate? I'm pretty sure you could. You could probably get a new wastegate in there if you really worked at it. But, uh, you know, overall, would it be nice if we could, say, replace just this part of the turbo where the wastegate is? Yeah, that would be perfect. But then you'd have to look at uh, bearings and everything else that go in there. So, uh, you know, is it better to just go ahead and buy a whole brand new one? And then call it a day on this? But I think I've proven that this has failed. Because if I push this up and kink the hose, it doesn't hold, folks. See? doesn't hold so this has failed that was the reason why this turbo wasn't operating it wasn't because the wastegate was necessarily bad it's because this failed in this case a lot of people think it's a wastegate in this case this is what failed and it wasn't this so and this is also to blame a lot this wastegate is also to blame but in this case this and this both failed at the same time so we're having a problem with both of them. Like I said, two separate issues caused a complete failure of this turbo. And uh, that's exactly what happened in this case. So as far as uh, what we're doing with the uh, turbos, uh, this is what you got. This is how it went ahead and failed. And as you can see, easily take it apart. We can do all that. But uh, yes, a pricey failure on this on a first generation uh, EcoBoost on an Edge on a 2012 and uh, the person had it replaced and kindly shipped this to, to me so I thank the member who shipped this to me so I could go over this video and review this and what's going on but this is what I've determined has been the failure on it and uh, this has definitely been a interesting review but anyway this is Mac T and of course I want you to like and subscribe my YouTube channel and make sure that you uh, hit that remind you bell, you know, and also subscribe to my group. And join my Facebook group, Mac T Ford Edge. Make sure you go there and talk to me and see me and, uh, and uh, see all the special content I make just on the Facebook group that you won't see on the YouTube channel. Because I do a lot of individual videos, short clips on the Facebook group. So join up on there to see those parts of it. And uh, remember, we're a private group. We're also the largest Ford Edge Facebook group. That's right, 5,000 plus members and we are a private group. Unlike the public ones where you post stuff and everybody sees it, we are private. So if you want to go in there and discuss your Edge without the world knowing about it, then that is the best place to go. But uh, anyway, my feet hit the floor today and I'm having a great day and I want you to have a great day too. Mercy Girl's got a couple one-liners, and a band of one always has great music that they're going to play. Thank you for watching my few videos, and remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Girl production.